Yo, did you know that we have a MAPS program that's a double split routine? It's MAPS PED, the most advanced program that we offer. You better have good genetics, great recovery, and be super experienced to follow this program. And uh, we're going to give away it away for free. It's going to give it away for free to one of you lucky viewers. Here's how you can get MAPS PED for free. Leave a comment below in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode. Subscribe to this channel and turn on your notifications. Do all those things. And if we like your comment, we'll notify you. And then you'll get access to the most advanced, most volume, most frequent workout program that we offer, MAPS PED. Also, before we get to the show, huge sale right now. We have a power bundle. We just put this together. MAPS Strong. This is Strongman-inspired workouts. And MAPS Powerlift. This is a powerlifting-style workout program together in the power bundle. Okay, Normally, they would retail together at 300 bucks. But right now, this power bundle, $79.99. That's it. One payment, $79.99. Full access for life, MAPS Strong and MAPS Powerlift. Just head over to mapsmarch.com to sign up. All right, here comes the show. Look, your back pain may be due to something you're not even thinking about. You may have weak hip flexors. Oh, yeah. Are you trying to call me out, So I am. You know what's... Okay, here's why I bring this up. So nine out of 10 times... If you have a client with back pain, it's like weak core stability. Yeah. You need hip mobility, Bad something along posture, those lines. Yeah. yeah lots posture. Of other, yeah. Contributing factors. And what you don't typically want to do is do direct hip flexor work because their hip flexors are already tight, trying to stabilize. And direct hip flexor work tends to make back pain worse than a lot of people. Yeah. However, in some cases, it, that's not the case. So mm -hmm. I'll use uh, an example. It's personal to me. And then, of course, Justin, we talked about this morning. Mm -hmm. So my wife's had – she's been having this back pain that's just like on and off for a while, training her core. She's working on her hips. She's doing 90-90. She's doing stability. She's like, it's so weird. I can't figure it out. I'm doing deadlifts, and my back just doesn't feel right. I get this low back pain. And then our friend uh, Marlon, a uh, great trainer – him and him and I were talking through DMs, and he goes, "Dude, you'll never guess." He goes, "I've been having this kind of chronic," and he's a great deadlifter, right? He's like, "I've been having this kind of chronic back pain," yeah. And I couldn't figure out the problem was. He goes, "And then I started to do direct hip flexor work." Mm -hmm. He goes, "Because I thought, well, that's the only thing that's left is maybe my hip flexors are weak." And he goes, "My back pain was gone." I did the same thing with Jessica, and so like basic, right? I have her lay on the floor and literally just lift one leg to kind of work one hip flexor, and then do the same yeah. thing with the other. This basic work. And it took away the back pain. And then I told you about that because you've been having back pain. And oh, yeah. And it's been way too long. So it's been a few months of like just in and out, like waking up and I'm like, do I need a new bed? Do Am I not you know, strengthening my core as much? So I've been really focused on core strengthening and um, it's just been battling it the whole time. I even moved from... Um, you know, any kind of like barbell training to more gymnastic and rings and, you know, body weight style intensive training. And it actually was starting to give me a lot of relief and benefit. And then I realized, you know, I was a lot more focused on leg lifts and I'm a lot more focused on, you know, more hip flexor specific type exercises where I'm like trying to strengthen and it started to really start to bring in even more relief. So it's, it, it that was something I wouldn't have even thought of. What do you, okay. So what, um, what do you guys, what are the three of those Marlon, Jessica, and you have in common? What do you think, it, what do you think is attributing to that in, for those three people well, or in general, like who, who? I think active and strong and the hip flexors play a very vital role in stabilizing the core. Yeah. But, you know, okay, Jessica did lots of direct hip work, lots of direct core work, no direct hip flexor work. She also mm -hmm. doesn't run. You know, because we're, we're not runners. She doesn't do any of, you know, like any kind of athletics that would require lots of hip flexor work. Yeah. Marlon, same thing. He does lots of that other work. And we're trained as trainers to not do direct hip flexor work unless you're training an athlete. Like if I'm training an athlete, especially sprinters, then we'll do hip flexor work. But usually you don't do it because. Because it, people use that instead of abs. Yeah, yep, absolutely. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so I think that's what's in common with 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 the, the three of them. Like uh, same thing with like Justin, you were an athlete for a long time. You had yeah. plenty of. Hip flexor. Yeah, work. it was never a problem. It's yeah. literally like I don't do any cardio. I don't know if you guys have been a big influence on that on me or not, but oh, just blame, just my shift. Like yeah, that. I'm gonna I'm gonna defer. Yeah, all <laughs> responsibility here. Um, but yeah, I I actually like I used to do it quite frequently. I would make sure that I'm like either running or I'm doing some kind of circuit where um, you know I'm I'm definitely moving my body aggressively uh, cardiovascularly, and I just haven't been doing it at all, and I've been sitting a lot. 
And, you know, I'm in traffic. I'm also sitting like driving home. And so it's just like, and then I'm still building and I'm, and I'm, you know, working on strength training, uh, but just neglecting completely any kind of activity in my hip flexor. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, if you look at the core, uh, there's another muscle that's involved in core stability. I don't think this is an issue with, with definitely not with you, which is the lower lats. Like you look at the attachment of the lower lats and then you look at the hip flexors and of course the core musculature and the hips, that's they're all involved in in stabilizing the lumbar spine. Mm -hmm. And so, and this is classic, right? I've had I've only had this happen a couple times with clients um, where you go down the list of the most common issues to solve an issue, to solve a, a pain problem, and you're like, okay, it's not that, it's not that, it's not that. And I've gotten there was a couple times where I got really frustrated trying to figure everything out. Mm. And then I just went down to the basics and said, what else is involved? in this ish area. And then I went and worked that. And then lo and behold, you know, there it was. But Interesting. I wonder if I'd benefit from it at all. I wondered too, because you're, yeah. you know, you have anterior pelvic tilt. So our, your tendency is probably to think the opposite. Oh, right. hip flexors are probably, right, right. That's don't work them. Yeah. But think about it this way. When do you ever train your hip flexors? Yeah. Well, I have a lot of sex, you know, a lot more than you guys probably do. <laughs> so I'm sure. <laughs> Sure, I'm, yeah. getting, I'm getting some. Yeah, of but there. you're on your back. You don't do it. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. You're just right. laying there. I'm not on my easy, easy guys. It's just, I, we're watching in the window. Yeah, yeah, I saw yeah. the video. Yeah. Yeah. Adam's not doing anything. If would you guys, if you, if we were ever, we were just talking about before we were on, we were talking about the apocalypse, right, happening and stuff like that. <laughs> like, what are we, we're talking about pulling money out of our accounts and all kinds of crazy shit like that. I mean, if it got really desperate, would you make sex videos for money? Huh? Oh, if it, I mean, there's nothing. Uh, off the table if you're desperate. Well, bro. that's what I'm saying. I'm like, at what, what, like, how desperate do you have to be financially, right, mm. before you make sex videos with your wife? Whoa. Whoa. I gotta, I'm not going to include Oh, her. so you were not. <laughs> Good luck with that. No. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, he's like, yeah, I'm going to make sex videos, but not with my wife. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no I'm not going to make gonna it gonna with anybody. my face oh, out. Oh, yeah. you, oh, oh, you think you're going to make a lot, lot of money self. having sex with yourself? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, bro. <laughs> only, only Sal would think <laughs> that. <laughs> Sal's like, no, I just want to involve her. that's in high demand? Oh, yeah, yeah. you're going to get a lot of hey, money, there's dude. some wealthy <laughs> gay dude that will pay for that. Come on. Okay. Uh, oh, no, I mean, yeah, no, you say include my wife. I don't want to speak for her, obviously. Sorry, honey. Uh, boy, you'd have to be pretty. You'd have to be pretty desperate, I think, yeah. to do something. Like that. I mean, what, what about for you? It's, you can't afford a nice watch. That's it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't have those fancy steak dinners again. I'm there. I'm there right away. Yeah. I don't know. You know, I was saying I was watching Pornhub the other day, and I saw a, a couple <laughs> had, that were that oh, were doing it, and they had their faces blurred. So I'm like, man, you don't blur your faces out. I mean, you'd have to know me to know it's me, right? So if you don't know me, you guys then... have like really distinctive tattoos. <laughs> it would yeah. be this, totally obvious. That's true. Yeah. Although I could probably, you know, sleeve up or you know wear wear a long sleeve <laughs> Just shirt. Just wear a shirt, <laughs> yeah, long sleeve, <laughs> like a like a midriff long sleeve. Hey, we're the we're the Viore yeah. long sleeve shirt. <laughs> yeah. No, they would know because we're sponsored yeah. by Viore. They got no, those Henleys. Is, did you just nice use a Viore commercial in our porno <laughs> talk? I, I, sure I don't did. think they could use that. Hey, Viore, Viore long sleeve shirts cover up your tats, so nobody knows it's you. <laughs> no one will know it's you. Yeah, no. Yeah. But form fitting, so you'll look great. Yeah, no, they would know because we're really shows off my arms though. Listen, we're 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 middle aged men. Okay, if the shit hits the fan, the sex stuff on videos off the, we're not we're, the market nobody cares about us you know, I, I feel like we have a couple years left i don't know yeah yeah no See, we're not making any, we're not making out any money doing that yeah at all. i hate to tell you <laughs> but uh, but okay back to the hip flexors thing what do you think about yourself adam because all, all joking aside you don't do any any yeah no work. i don't i and it, it, to the exact point that you said you know uh of anything I, I'm, I'm i'm not thinking that way at all um although i'm not suffering from any low back pain right now so I, I tell you what, though, I mean, it does or has came and go, uh, came and went in in my lifting career. So, if and when that that arises again, I will I will address that. I know personally, if there's a thing that if we're being honest here, right, about things that we neglect and we don't do, it's core work for me. Yeah, one hundred percent. I don't do enough direct core work and ab work <clears> that I should do. I know that that's an error, and I know if when I do that, I I feel great. I feel very supported in my hips and my low back. Um, and technically right now I, I should be doing that and I haven't been, but in part of it is cause I haven't felt it. I haven't felt any issues. No yeah. Anything. You know, it's interesting for me for core. I'm relatively consistent. You're I used very, to be very consistent with it. Relatively. I'd say you're the most consistent with it. Yes. But that's, I mean, I mean, you're comparing me against you guys, so it's not, I don't, have to well, I don't, I don't think, I don't think, I don't think I've ever seen, uh, 
two weeks go by and I don't see you doing ad work. I do. I do it once a week. So when I say once a week versus everything else, which is usually two or three days a week, um, but so it's not as consistent as it used to be. But here's what I do notice is if I take a week off or whatever and I come back, my strength is still there, but my stability has gone a little bit. And then if I do a very intense core exercise like um, dragon flags, it, which I like them because they really develop my abs, right? They, they stick out and I like that feeling. I like having that, that turtle I shell front ab front levers like that trying to get back into it too. Yeah, I, I love it. But you know what the problem is? It's so intense, right? So I'll do like six, seven reps, low reps. I'll feel good. Then if I squat or something the next day, I'll, I'll end up, uh, my risk of hurting my back is, is through the roof uh, because my core, you know, I fatigued it. You're still so, lifting heavy on the squatting when you're doing, when you probably yeah, should scale way back yeah. on the, the squatting. Yeah. You weight. know where I get the most benefit from is uh, <laughs> uh, oblique work. Man, I, if I train my rotation, I feel mm -hmm. so damn stable yeah. when I do everything else, more so than if I train my abs personally. Well, I remember when we you went on the kick and so did I after Justin introduced the windmills to us and I felt great. I haven't done those in a while. I know. And I'm and either of I and I know I'm kind of due for that that in my routine and it's 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 been on my mind for a while. That and both Turkish kit-ups and windmills two movements I absolutely love and recommend all the time and I need to take my own advice cuz it's been a while since mm -hmm. I've programmed them and I just I know I feel great. Are when you I do. Justin, do you still you, there was a second there where you were practicing the bent press, one arm bent mm -hmm. press. Have yeah. you still? You know, I didn't. I haven't been doing that. So uh, this is me kind of coming back into the whole functional side of things. For a while there, I was really just trying to kind of do some basic compound lifts with like bodybuilder, you know, style like hypertrophy, mm -hmm. um, and and you know, just out of like a, a change and a shift. But yeah, I'm totally like pulling myself back in mm -hmm. uh, to the functional side of things and been doing kettlebell swings. I've been teaching the kids, you know, at, at high school kettlebell swings and just trying to kind of you know emulate that myself. So I've been training with the kettlebell, with the gymnastic rings, pretty much. I, I used to go on big kicks of uh, training outside and I would have rings and, and, and um, kettlebells and I would do everything pretty much out there. I love outdoor workouts, but the, the bent press was really interesting. I, I have a lot of trouble with that kind of rotation and lateral stability, but what's interesting about it is that was a, a staple feat of strength with strongmen at the turn of the, you know, at the beginning of the 19th century or the 18th century, excuse me, 20th century, I should say. And it was incredible the amount of weight these guys could lift. Like you're talking about one arm, yeah. 300 pound bent press. Now they were very strong, but also their technique must have been yeah. incredible. They must oh, have been it's able all to about really dispersing max that force, you know, and like being able to get bypass it so it doesn't just leak out at your shoulder, and you're you're able to kind of get it, you know, going through your torso all the way down through yeah. your legs. Like it's totally a technique where when you get good at it, you know, you can you can really kind of start stacking weight. Yeah, because I feel like they would position themselves with the barbell. Walk mm -hmm. me through this, right? And yeah. then rather than lifting the barbell. They would move their arm the down while time. lifting their arm. They're the moving it down, so yeah, I guess the gravitational forces aren't quite as intense yeah. with that. I don't really know how to explain and articulate well, it, but it's kind of like coaching somebody through a squat where you break at the knees and the hips at the same time. Mm. It's your your pressing and hinging at the same time, or like an Olympic lift and where they pop the barbell and then get underneath it. Yeah, type of deal, right? You got to get really good at packing your shoulder and being able to kind of like um, keep that super stable, so there's no. Um, you know, muscular fatigue with yeah. it there. It just kind of goes right through you. Yeah. Speaking of outdoor workouts, as a kid, it was my favorite. Absolute favorite thing to do to be outside lifting weights, the sun and the wind and all that stuff. I would really love, and I don't know, have you guys ever worked out at Muscle Beach down in LA? Mm -hmm. yeah, I, I did once. And I just like being outside with the weights. I wish more gyms had that, like I an know. open. Well, there's actually a lot of favorite our, things. Our our buddy over at Santa Cruz Power Fitness, he uh, built an all out because what? of COVID. Oh, because of COVID, actually, a lot of these places did. Mm -hmm. I know the UFC gym guys; they did it also. Like, so there's quite a few places because of COVID now have built like an outdoor place for you to lift, which is kind of cool. Oh, I love that. It's yeah, just yeah. such a great feeling, like better pumps, even if it's hot or cold, it's just a great. I mean, what's cool about Venice is like, it, it's common practice to be shirtless and totally. <laughs> taking yeah. up all the sun. Where, totally. uh, like yeah. most of these like kind of gym places, they they have yeah. awnings or coverings yeah. and stuff like that. Where you're It's a working. lot smaller than you think though. If you've ever, you guys have driven by it or seen oh, it. Oh, it's right? tiny. We went and walked yeah, yeah, we've oh, been there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I've been there several yeah. times. I've just never lifted there. Well, yeah, it's a tiny all, every place. time. I, every time I've been there, I I haven't been in my jacked physique phase where I would love. No. <laughs> if I'm gonna go lift on Venice, I want to be in some of my better shape. I don't want to be like some of the worst shape I've been yeah. in, and then out there, you, you know. You want to be in com 
competition shape. The, the yeah. golds down there in Venice is small too. It's not very big. Uh, no, I remember the first time we went to that. Also, I I expected it to be like this super big old gym, and it's it's all old and run down and everything. But so it's got nostalgia packed. for sure. So yeah, yeah. The, uh, some of the best gyms I've ever worked out in, you would think were just dungeons. Just cra it's all about the atmosphere. At least for me, it's all about the oh, energy yeah. and the atmosphere in the gym. I still remember that one gym we went to in was it Texas? Was mm -hmm. it Texas? What was yeah. it called? Oh my Anybody God. remember? Yeah. yeah, Texas. It was called Texas, Texas something. something. Yeah, it was Texas. I don't something. Recall the name. Anyway, it was. It was. God, that sucks. I would love to give him a I shout know. out. It was. No, it was a power lifter, strong man, strength athlete type gym. Yeah, the feel in there was incredible. And then they had the outdoor area with the logs, and we were doing some carries and stuff. Mm -hmm. Big Tex. Big Tex. Big Tex. We went to Big Tex, and we were going to film. We weren't even going to work out, but all of us were like, let's get our... Oh, we got to get in a workout. We yeah, got to yeah. do a workout. Was that your was favorite? Would cool. you say... I've, we've been to a lot of gyms together. Would you say that was your favorite? I mean, I love Pikulski's gym because his equipment is say, phenomenal. See, that's totally me. I'm it's a bodybuilder gym. That right? or the Reno gym, I like a lot. I like the Reno one personally because it had really cool features for the sled, like even a, um, an uphill yeah. um, area where you could like drag the sled up. Mm. It just had a lot of really cool athletic functional s stuff. The thing that I liked at Pikulski, so Pikulski, Big Tex, probably my two favorites, but what I liked at Pikulski's gym is the incline <laughs> that he had for dumbbells, you stood. Remember that? Yeah. It wasn't yeah, a, yeah. A, like a sit-down incline yeah. bench. Yeah, yeah. You stood and I did like back. that. That was cool. And it was way more stable. I felt way more connected. Yeah, yeah. I way. loved his dumbbells, too. Oh, oh those were amazing. The chrome ones or whatever? Yeah. Uh -huh. I still like the old school dumbbells with the plates, the thin plates that you can hear moving when uh, you work out. But it's just like that, that pinches moving. your skin and you're like, ah, oh. uh, It's just nostalgia. Yeah. You know, it's just a bunch of nostalgia. It's the sound. That's what it is. It is. It's the clanging of the weights. Yeah. That, yeah. And then there was that place that we filmed Maps Aesthetic in years ago. That was, you know, that was my. I know. That was my high school gym. Now, I like that gym because that gym had old ass equipment that I remember working out in as a kid with, yeah. the, with chains. I, like old plate loaded, not plate loaded, selectorized equipment. Now you see it with cables and, and with like, what is it called? Like bands, like pulling the way through. They were chains. It was yeah. chain link stuff, which for obvious reasons they don't do anymore. You catch a finger in yeah. that. Oh, yeah. Not that long. <laughs> not that long ago, I saw my stepdad uh, recent, recently, right? and recently, and he was. Uh, he, we were catching up, and he was. You know, he follows along what we're doing and stuff, and he was just talking about, man, it's so crazy to see where you guys have all, what you came from, and where you're at, and all this stuff. And he's like, I still remember that. That first gym that you, when you were 17, that you used to go to, what was that over off of McHenry? And he's like, just, I said, Dad, you know that's. We actually, the the owners of that gym ended up later on, years later, obviously, were fans of Mind Pump, reached out to us, and we shot one of our very first programs yeah. in that gym. He was like, what? No way. I'm like, yeah, no, yeah, it looks yeah. exactly the same, too. It's like literally, I think 90 95% of the equipment that I used when I was a kid is still in that place. I love it. I yeah. love that old stuff. I don't know if they're still going. It was called uh, Inner Sport. Inner Sport yeah. in Modesto. Uh, California. Except we reshot that program, and so you guys remember the Super Cyan Gym? Yes. Uh, yeah. So well, I'd say that was another great gym. That it was, was a really cool gym. It was more, you know, updated equipment and whatnot, but it just had everything you could possibly think of in that. gym. I would love to do a gym tour. I, mean, I was, no, there's no I business. I was just for him. thinking. I was literally just thinking that. You know, people always ask like, "What's next for Mind Pump or whatever?" Like, I, that would be kind of a fun thing to do at one point. When we can kind of step away cross from cross country gym tour, yeah, just like take a tour and like get get a list of what everybody like the best gym in the in each state, yes, right, and like work our work just our way around the country, and go and get a workout and give feedback. Oh yeah, I mean that's a show waiting to happen, right? Like that mm. would be cool to do that. Are there gyms on your list that you'd want to visit? Do you guys know of <laughs> that? I, not that I know. It, most most all gyms. There's a there's actually a 24 hour fitness that's in L A. That I've never. They're big one in L A. The I, the one that I. Um, Wow, what's it? Where is it at? I forget where the exact the street that it's on, but there's a big, like their largest, you know, home based gym is in L. A. I never got a chance to go to that, and I heard it's it's pretty epic. Um, I'm there's, trying to think. There's Max Schmarzo's gym that was really sounded really crazy. It was like this almost Olympic athlete um, setup. So there's like all every single like crazy sports driven piece of equipment is in this place so i, I really very the, curious for that the reno gym it'd be hard for that to be top because well, that place was sick i like something that is massive like that so you have lots of room i hate so the only thing i don't like about you the like dungeon, size for sure <laughs> the thing i don't like about the small 
dungeon gyms is I don't like the feeling of like rubbing shoulders with people while I work out. I like how well, I like big yeah. open. Yeah, yeah, I like I'm my space. I like to come in with my duffel bag and throw it down next to where I'm and pull pull my chalk out, yeah. pull my mm. my belt out, and like kind of scatter it around my area. I want to work out and put you know 20 minutes into that area yeah. and then move along. I like, like heavy lifting stations like right next to a field or like basketball courts or all. So it's like you have you know over here you have the sports section and then also you have heavy lifting. I yeah. feel like they had everything there. They really yeah. did. Like they had like if you I didn't everything from if you want to be CrossFit stuff. Yeah. Maybe they 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 lacked a little bit in the strongman type stuff. Oh right. So I don't think they had any. The Atlas big tax was amazing. For UFC yeah. gyms are pretty good. They've got some great setups. I would see. I would like to go to whatever that gym Ronnie Coleman used to work out at. That one it didn't have AC. It was all fucked. It's the one that. <laughs> it's the one where he's he, where he's deadlifting eight hundred pounds. And, smells like ass. What is that called, <laughs> yeah. Doug? Maybe look duct it up. Tape, duct tape but, on all the fucking machines. No, no, no. And stuff. <laughs> Ronnie Coleman works out there. I know there. exactly what you're Branch talking. Warren works it, out there. Isn't it the, the Met RX one or the? It's called. No, no. So there's also the other famous one. Uh, um, uh, uh, Fuck, it's going to slip. It's slipping my mind right now. It's Metroflex? It's like, Metroflex. Metro, I, I would love to go when to I Metroflex. When I say MetRx, I said yeah, MetRx. I said yeah. the protein powder. That's a supplement. Yeah. <laughs> Metroflex and then the Bev. Bev. Oh, Bev Francis gym. Thank you. Powerhouse, that's right? Yes, that's another yep, that's one I'd one. like to go to. And I'd love to go to Dorian's gym that he worked out, which was literally in mm. a basement. It was a, a gym in the basement somewhere in England. I'd love to just go and, and train there. I want to go to DeFranco's gym. That looks like a good time. Oh yeah, he's yeah. got a, he's got a great place. I'm sure it's a lot of fun. I'm sure. Hey, so you guys want to hear a, a cool study that came out on vitamin C? On vitamin C. Vitamin C. Good old vitamin C. So they 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 showed that giving uh, this was an animal study, but we've seen this in humans. Do, having high doses, they did a gram, so a gram of vitamin C a day reduced the adaptations to exercise versus not taking vitamin C. So lots of vitamins. So I want you guys to guess why this why this would be the case, right? So they had they gave rats vitamin C, other rats no vitamin C. The rats that took the vitamin C had lower adaptation rates of adaptation than the than the rats that didn't take interesting the vitamin C. Um, well, well just because the doses were so high, it's it's the what it does is because high doses of vitamin C right uh, in, increases antioxidant levels in the mm -hmm. blood, reduces the stress response. So it's like taking anti-inflammatory. It's mm. like the ibuprofen yeah. study that you'd mentioned. Now, that's a lot, though, right? You said one gram? Yeah. Because you, you, normally the prescription is, what, 500 to 1,000 milligrams? 1,000 milligrams is a gram. Okay. Oh, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. It, is that right? Yeah. Oh. 1,000 yeah. Yeah. Like milligrams is one gram, right? So, um, it, 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 yes, people often take it, but what people don't realize is the things that you do to reduce stress in the body right. or that you may take, could also potentially reduce the adaptation response from exercise. Now, I want to caution people because- so Stress is a signal for change. Right? right, right, right. So like reducing inflammation overall may reduce the muscle building signal. But I want to caution people because most people are better off reducing inflammation. So the average person is like, I don't want to reduce inflammation. I want to build as much muscle as possible. It's like, no, actually, right. well, you need less inflammation. Yeah. yeah, so I, I want to caution people with studies like this because- then you get people who are in inflamed state. They're not very healthy anyway. And they're like, I want to build the most muscle I can. So I'm not going to take fish oil. I'm not going to take vitamin C. I'm going to make sure that I just stay as inflamed as possible. You, no, I, I think it's for more for for most people doing things to reduce inflammation is a good idea. Plus, in my uh, you know opinion, reducing the muscle building signal a little bit naturally, with the trade off of having lower systemic inflammation. Um, and, and lower rates of oxidative stress and damage, you're probably better off. You're better off anyway in the long term versus just that short term, mm -hmm. you know, type of window. I anyway. have I have a, a report for us and I'm curious to hear what you guys think. It's not a study, it's a report on um, home buying. So this last quarter, this this just this report just came out that uh, eighteen point five, I believe, it's just under twenty percent of all homes that were purchased in the last quarter were investors, which is the highest in history since uh, year 2000. We've never seen any- anywhere. Wow, so yeah. a little less than a quarter of all homes mm -hmm. sold were like- Investors. Oh, so wow. investor groups or mm -hmm. people that are investors, uh, you know, uh, private investors, whatever, that are buying the homes up. Now, it, now, what was the speculation or the reasoning in the article? Uh, the article wasn't speculating anything. It was literally a report. So sometimes that's what I'll be reading. Uh, not everything I read is like speculative or somebody putting their two cents in. It's literally like, here's the numbers. Yeah, here's the yeah. facts. Well, facts you, are that you, yeah. there's a, a, a good What do you point. guess? Here's Why do you think is. that is? Well, so I, I mean, if you're investing in real estate, you've, you've, 
you've gotten to a place in your life to where you're you're fairly financially successful or you're a part of a financial group that does a ton of research and homework before you buy it. So to me, that that just tells me that we're we're far from seeing a plateau or a correction. And that more more people that are paying attention to this, that are investing in that area, see the writing on the wall and the direction that we're going and that it's going to continue to go up. For them to increase their – I mean, I've kind of t- tampered us a little bit and slowed down and been a little more like yeah. hesitant because I'm like, it's got to be this correction that we've been talking about forever. It's got to be coming soon. It's going to slow up. Uh, yet here m- more investors are accelerating right now than ever before. And my thought on that is just that the I think that the the end of the the biggest thing that's causing this is the the lack of inventory. There's it's there's lots of different reasons why home prices are going up. You know, with loans and other other factors, right? And cost of cost of materials. There's many things, but one of the biggest is just purely sub- supply and demand. I mean, that's just basic economics right now. That there's just not enough supply for the amount of people that want homes. And then you add in the fact that investors are buying at a, a higher percentage more than ever. So people that need a home or that are buying their first home have even less inventory. So all of this is driving driving up even more. And the end is not near. Like It's not like tomorrow we're all of a sudden going to see. Like There there was this idea and speculation a, a couple years ago or a year, I say a year, year and a half ago, that, oh, when they when all this stuff with the pandemic ends and they, they pull the moratorium on the foreclosures, we're going to see a flood on the market and all these houses that were built. And then, and then we're going to be way over on supply. And then we're going to see a correction. It's going to dip down. And we're just not seeing that. Like so many people are not getting foreclosed on. Many people are are getting forgiven on a lot of the the missed payments, or they're just tacking it on mm-hmm. to the back half of their loan. Most people that were buying homes in the last five years or longer put twenty to twenty five percent down in the first place. So, and you add in how much the, all these homes have appreciated, so they have plenty of equity in there. Nobody is broke on uh, that has these. Not nobody. A small percentage of people that would actually get foreclosed on will get foreclosed on. So we're just not, we don't have enough supply. Now, do you think Mm. it might be uh, that investors are, because investors obviously are a little bit more savvy Mm -hmm. because they're they're investing. Do you think maybe this may be their way of hedging against a, uh, you know, inflation inflation and maybe hedging against the crash? Like in other words, hey, let's buy some assets because we're going to see a downturn in a lot of things. And and historically, if things go down, real estate typically does a little better because yeah. it's a hard yeah it's it's interesting because the it it also goes against kind of basic investing principles like one of the things as a real estate investor you're you're really paying attention to cap rates and cap rates have been uh have been shrunk or sh- have been shrinking for the last year or two quite a bit it's half of why we've slowed down is because it's like man, it's hard to find a house right now where we can rent it out and break even or make a little bit of cash flow on it so it's slowed it down but investors are are buying anyways. So even if you're not cash flowing very good, there's not very good cap rates, which tells me they they are. They're they're hedging, he, they're hedging that okay, it doesn't matter right now. I can't currently cash flow very much. Rents are going up uh, faster than they ever have uh, in the past and I may not be able to cash flow very much right yeah. now, but with the rate that inflation is going, the rate that uh, uh, renting is going in a year or two, it will be cash flowing for me. And if inflation yeah. continues at the rate it's continuing, having a hard asset like that is going to save yeah, my ass. See, inflation has got to be one of the worst things for people uh, in the lower incomes, right? Because they don't have the capability to invest in inflation protected or you know, inf- you know, hedges against inflation because they don't have expendable income. So they just lose their purchasing power at the grocery store and at the market, mm-hmm. and they don't have these assets that'll rise with inflation. So it's, uh, you know. Yeah, and it's really what, you know, with what we got going on and stuff, uh, Ukraine, Russia type stuff, it's really going to be interesting to see what happens to the stock market over the next couple of months. Like, I think that's, we're going to, it's been, that's been plummeting. Bitcoin's been plummeting also. I think it's at like record lows in the last like two years. Mm-hmm. So, I think we're going to see a lot of that stuff um, get hurt over the next month or two for mm. sure. Yeah, buy more mm. NFTs, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, even that, I mean, I don't, you know, I have no idea where where that's going to be in a couple of years. Also, I think we, you know, not that long ago on the mm. show, we were talking comparing it to the dot com era, right? Like, mm. the truth is, uh, yes, they're here to stay. Yes, it's going to change the way. Uh, we do things, but most people aren't going to lose their ass. Yeah. Did um, they did they say like what the trends were in that report of like 
you know, uh, you know, single family homes like they were purchasing versus like, you know, multiplexes versus uh, like flipping homes or like what some of the strategies yeah, are. Yeah, you know, for, and actually for the, not the first time ever, but uh, typically uh, single family homes are not purchased as much by investors, but you're seeing more investors buying single family homes yeah. than what you've ever seen before. They typically go for apartment complexes, multi multi units. Because uh, there's better cash flow, better cap rates and stuff like that. But I mean, I think to what you're saying, so I think they're just at this point, they're just trying to swoop up anything, every asset anything you can get a hold. Yeah. yeah. People are overpaying on things, paying cash outright. And it's just they I think everybody thinks that this this, you know, transitory inflation is not so transitory. And if you don't park your money in a uh, asset or commodity or something that could potentially appreciate over the next year mm -hmm. or two, you literally are losing money by allowing it just to sit in a savings account. Yeah. Did you, did any of you guys read the article from Jackie about Arnold being like 80% uh, vegan? 80% yeah. <laughs> vegan. What the hell does that mean? What does what that I mean? saw, I saw the headline on that. Can we break like, this down? I don't know. What so that am I, means. I guess. I mean, you have your, you have your, you would like like the rest. You have steak and then you have some rice. Do you just like reduce <laughs> the amount of meat in your diet? Is that like, so now we're 80%? That has to be a play to sell his fucking powder, right? Because didn't yeah. he do a vegan protein powder just yeah. recently? I mean, that has to be a, the the whole move on that because that's such a it's you know it's a ridiculous thing to even point out, and it's even more ridiculous to think that this guy's actually tracking his food every single day and then breaking down the percentage of it that is considered vegan. Like, what the fuck does that even? You want to know what's funny? Most oh, people man. are eighty percent vegan. Yeah, if you look at yeah, wheat, yes, soy, it's mostly exactly. carbs. Yes, most people eat like a majority of their food for carbs, so it's really not. I mean, I wonder if they if someone wrote that article and it's not even from him. They, they just took that as a, a basic statistic. Yeah. Average person eats 80 percent of their food is carbohydrate intake. So we're just going to come out and say believe, yeah, eighty percent is is vegan. Oh yeah, man. <laughs> but it was just funny. It reminded me of like uh, it was kind of a funny interaction I had when I was training the kids at the uh, uh, school, and uh, one of the kids' phones on there it, it said like one hundred percent vegan, like the sticker that was on their phone. And I walked by and I was like, oh, like uh, immediately I was thinking we don't even have a commercial for Organifi today, but I was just like. Oh man, like I have a good protein powder source for you. Bob and I trying to like you know pitch Sell. him the, the pitch of it, and all he's like, "What do you mean?" He's like, "I was like, oh, I saw you know you're you're vegan or you know and that's your preference." And he's like, "Oh no, one of my buddies put that on there as a joke." <laughs> <laughs> like punked me with that. <laughs> they start telling me about, and it reminded me of when I was like that age, and that was like a common prank was to take like a bumper sticker and like put that bumper sticker know, like is they're supporting so and so or you yeah. know like i love you know you name the president like they put that on there or whatever see it's stuff like this that makes me hopeful think, yeah well <laughs> well that remember we talked the other day on the show yeah. about that the generation coming up is kind of going to rebel against the the norm of the 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 millennial generation yeah, right yeah. so i kind of feel like it's going but going back that direction. I feel like just five years ago or seven years ago, you're in high school, give the vegan kid a hard time or tease someone and say they're vegan when they're not, right. would be you'd be crucified for it. But here the, it's coming back again like that. And I think it's that younger that Gen Z coming back uh, and we'll pushing see. back. We'll see if they start, you know, hitting each other in the nuts for no reason. We'll like we did. I mean, it's did you speaking of your football guys so that did you ever get them all on did you bring all the fucking boxes of magic spoon that we have here? Yeah. You, oh, you did? Oh, did. really? Oh, okay. I did. Yeah. I haven't reported back on that, have I? Yeah. I uh I literally cleared, I think it was like 20 something boxes from the back. So if you notice it was a bit empty, that's because of me. Uh, and I, I, at the end, I just kind of pitched him like, Hey, if you guys are interested and like, dude, not even a flinch, everybody ran over there and like grabbed a box because it's like I trained them and then they kind of only have, I don't know, five minutes to get ready before they got to jump to class. And so they're all hungry. And so that was like, they just start eating it right out of the box. And I'm like, <laughs> uh, it's good with milk too, you know, like take it home dude. and no, they just like started consuming it. Oh, great. Uh, like small servings of what? 13, 14 grams of protein, yeah. no sugar at all. Great green free uh like here you go and then it's like what are the, the flavors doug has them up here fruity Katrina's mom eats it frosted like peanut butter blueberry cinnamon cookies and cream yeah maple waffle cocoa yeah of course the kids are i was hesitant it. to give out any of the fruities though like because that's, that's my, my jam so, that's still you guys the best? there was like two of them and i'm like i'll give you the golden goose you know, <laughs> as long as you appreciate to this. the best kid yeah. I, I actually i don't know if you guys have, I've, I've eaten it dry it's actually a pretty good little snack yeah, yeah, I was a big when I was a kid. I was a big dry cereal eater. I'd yeah. sit in front of the TV and yeah, right out of this box. Doug, you don't do any so way. Much. You don't do any way. So you don't do the magic spoon. Do no, you? I do the magic spoon. Oh, you do. Yeah. 
because I was thinking, I saw you post on the stories the other day and you were showing like you eat your carrots when you're trying to, you know, stay satiated and, and keep your mouth busy and not overeat calories. I bet Magic Spoon in a little bag would not be bad either. It's not very high calorie and get protein with it. Doug will throw it down though. That's the problem. Yeah, well, I'll eat a whole box. Well, no, the, the, yo, the <laughs> one sitting. The, I mean, one of the best hacks ever, and it, this was something I had to do when I was competing and I had to be so strict about food, but I've carried that on now going forward is I, I just did this the other night. The other, other night I went downstairs to get something to, to snack on and I have those little... Uh, like almost like mini, they're not sandwich bags. They're like half of a sandwich bag. You've yeah, I have that? those. It's, yeah. like a, it's almost yeah. like a drug bag. And I, yeah, kind of like that. So <laughs> I just to say, I put my marijuana and then joints. I also put my snacks. Yeah. Yeah, and this yeah. is, so it works yeah. dual purpose here. Yeah. So I I will if I go downstairs to get something that I want to snack on, regardless of what are they, we had these like apple air crisp things that we had. And I can. They're so good. They're so light. And I know they're low calorie. I'll crush a whole bag if I watch a movie and have them. So I'll, when I do it, I'll put them in that bag. Let, let myself fill it all the way up. That's fine. And then go. And then when yeah. it's gone, it's gone. Now, Doug, you put it out there on the story. You're trying to do some like transformation thing. So you now did. I know you're serious about this. I am serious. Well, the, the problem is the last time I did any type of transformation was maybe two or three years ago when we all did it. Yeah. Right. And it of course, I'm highly competitive. Yeah. And so I, I made it my mission to win that. Uh, but since that time, I really haven't had any motivation and this this winter, I just kind of let things go a little too far. You know, I was eating out every every weekend, maybe once or twice, sometimes even more. Yeah, uh, I was having a few beverages here and there that I normally didn't have. Um, and you know, the, those this is calories. All my bad yeah, exactly. Yeah. Justin has so, been. Come a, on, uh, Doug, defer. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So anyway, I was just consuming way more calories than I normally do, and I started putting on weight. And I hit a number that I hadn't hit for 10 years as far as my body fat was concerned as I measure across my waist. So that's how I determine, you know, yeah. how fat am I really? Yeah. And it's always my weight measurement. So when I got done dieting down about 10 years ago, I was at a 32-inch waist when I stopped that main diet. Uh, and then I am now around 33 inches. So that is... Uh, Wait a minute. Hold on. You went from 32 to 33? Yeah. In 10 yeah. years. Yeah. That's an inch. That's nothing. Well, Dude, no, but you know, still, you know, but, but you got to realize... In between that time, I went down to 28. Oh, right, right, so, right, right, right. Yeah, so I've I've been inching back up from 28. That was in Got 2014. It. Got it. And then every year, I've gotten a little bit more okay with a little bit higher number on the waist measurement. Got it. You know Got who it. he reminds me of? There's a, there's a scene. You don't watch this, I don't think. You might. Do you, do you watch uh, Marvelous Miss Mazel? Yeah. Oh, Mazel, Mazel, yeah. You, know Mazel, Mazel, you know the Mazel, new season Mazel, is out, right? Yeah. yeah. So the new, season is, the new season is out. I think it's on episode three right now or whatever. That, absolutely love that show. But there's a there's a scene in there that I think I can't help but think of Doug when she 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 has her little notebook and she has for like 17 years consistently she takes her thigh measurement she takes her waist oh, her, wow, her bust right. and Doug like swears by that her mom like, was like obsessed with that, yes right? and, he, and Doug over, is yeah. like you see Doug carries his little notebook around yeah. everywhere he still logs right. all his That's workouts awesome. he logs he logs his waist measurement so when that scene comes on I just picture hey, Doug so, so carrots <laughs> is that your like uh, your low calorie diet snack that's just something to keep my mouth busy you know sometimes I just want to eat. Yeah. That's so what and, all the models use. And carrots? Uh, yeah, carrots and like celery. You know, the, the nice thing yeah. about carrots is that they have a good crunch, so you feel like you're taking something substantial in. Yeah. But funny, when I did my story, I got some really interesting responses. Like well, Because of the way your carrots look, that's why. Well, they're ugly carrots, but it doesn't yeah. matter. They tasted good. Yeah. Uh, what were they, they, they were talking crap about okay. your carrots? I don't know. They were none of the responses made a lot of sense to me, but they were obviously like sexual. They were oh, because he's oh, keeping his mouth busy. That's why. oh, yeah. Well, you maybe. said keep my mouth busy, and then you show a picture of a carrot that looks like a dick. That's why. Yeah. Oh, how did you not pick up on that? <laughs> One, two, three. You know what? Nailed it. I'm still innocent. You know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, obviously. <laughs> Doug's like, I don't even chew on it. I yes, suck on the carrot need. until it goes away. <laughs> I need to keep my mouth busy. <laughs> I'm a I, carrots I was, that look like I was, dicks. I was all about. <laughs> calm down. <laughs> Hey, Justin won't even eat a carrot. He has to cut it in nope. pieces. Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 I'm yeah. not eating this damn carrot. Yeah, yeah. Oh, if I do, nobody's gonna see me. I'll hey, a, are you the guy that won't eat, are you the guy that won't eat a banana? You have to cut it. He would never a eat, a, yeah, yeah. eat a banana. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. This guy tried to get me order a, a dirty <laughs> banana <laughs> drink. That's like, a real drink. What? Isn't it? Dude, yeah. all I can think of is like, why is it dirty? You know, like, <laughs> where did you put that banana? It's the um it's the 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 brown liqueur that it's you use. Probably rum. I, I Delicious. Yeah, yeah I think but... it's like a it's like a rum, and so that's what makes it a dirty. Dirty banana is way better than a clean banana. I just I just imagine yeah. somebody perking up like 
Dirty yeah. banana. Yeah, yeah. Dirty banana. Yeah. I like I dirty bananas food. too. No, I, pickles do is the best. Oh yeah, yeah pickles are great. Too. Yeah, yeah because at least it's salty. Yes. You know what I mean? That's true. Pickles are another one. I need I to like, have the salt, dude. Otherwise, for carrots. I like baby salt. carrots though better than I like the big ones like that. Oh yeah, I'll, baby I'll snack carrots on baby are great. Carrots. Yeah, I'll snack on yeah, baby carrots. Yeah, I just so, so happened to buy a massive bag from Costco. Oh. And that's why I was having. Katrina, you know, I don't Katrina ran to Costco yesterday, and she came home with. Costco sells olive oil by like the twenty bottles or like that. Twenty bottles? Yeah, it's like a like a case. This don't big. buy that much. You know, I know. I go rancid. I know it's stuff, but I'm like, what do we need this much olive oil for? And then yes, it goes bad eventually. I'm like, why we get this much? She goes, we go through a lot. I'm like, really? I don't think we go through that does she much. Use it for your. Does she still massage you? Uh, she has done that before, but she has spe special oil. For oh, that. she doesn't use it. We use. You know, what we do. We, we do go through quite a bit because we. I I've made this is kind of a new habit. Um, I. We cook a lot of our food now in the iron skillet, like consistently. I I almost yeah. use the I almost always. In fact, every day we yeah. use it at least once, whether breakfast, lunch, or dinner. We we cook with the iron skillet, and then obviously when you clean it, you always mm -hmm. do a, a a layer of like olive oil. So that's probably why we <clears> go through as much as we we go through. I, I didn't know we were going through. You that know, much. you get iron in your diet from using mm -hmm. an iron skillet. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, you can actually get too much. Well, so so here's the thing. So I was reading about this actually. I didn't. Even, I wasn't even supposed to bring this up, but. Um, it's men who donate blood annually, once or twice a year, a dramatic reduction in uh, heart disease and stroke. I remember you brought that up because you were talking about going to do it yourself. I you am. remember I brought up, you teased me because I said I get lightheaded. Yeah. I, With, <laughs> well, that, you weren't even donating blood. You got a stupid regular. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, that's why I won't because when you donate blood, they take like uh, they take like four or five of those big old hell vials. Of blood. Yeah, yeah, I have before and like that I was like, I definitely need a cookie afterwards. Yeah, yeah. one one is like just No, I mean, your... but, you, but because, uh, so women menstruate, so their body naturally cycles through red blood cells. But men can d get high too high a levels because me, we, me and my buddies used to give blood and then you know it makes you a cheap date later that night. Huh? Know? Oh, you drink less alcohol? Yeah. Yeah. Wait a minute, are you whoa, serious? Whoa, say it again? You? Oh, this is a terrible advice. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's just, wait, you actually wait, wait, wait. for reals? Yeah, dude, if you donate, if you donate blood and then you then you drink later you on, you drink get later drunk. that night. You know, like maybe one, like two, three drinks. Really? Like, I was out. Yeah. <laughs> what a terrible. Now, okay, so what a terrible. terrible wait, 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 yeah. so, wait, why? Explain that to me. Why? Why? Why donating blood would make? First you of all, you donate blood. You're already lightheaded. You're already going to feel w wobbly and weak. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. The so I think it's probably just that plus the alcohol. Well, he's not literally doing it right after he does it because you return to normal like later on that day. No, it takes longer than that. It takes 24 yeah, to 48 I don't think hours. You're fully, yeah. Oh, maybe. Yeah, no, Jessica, she donated. Maybe you're right. Maybe I did feel a little under the weather all day long. Yeah, I no, feel. Jessica donated blood. And then that night we were hanging out or whatever and she stood up and almost passed out. And mm. then we freaked out for a second and then I'm like, oh yeah, you donated blood. That's why that, That's why you did that. Yeah, see, I get like that. That's how I get too. Like that's not... Yeah. Really? Wow, then you so drink. don't do that yes. is my point. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how to get drunk you'll get You'll get stuff drawn on your face. Hey, how, now how weird is this, right? How weird is it that old weird medical practices have always a little bit of truth in them, right? They used to do bloodletting. Bloodletting, yeah. That was a very common practice during the medieval times. When you were sick, they would let you bleed out thinking that you would get out you the You have disease. demons in there. Yeah, yeah or they put leeches on you and it. shit. Yeah. But there's actually some health benefits to that. Isn't that so weird? Yeah. yeah. Now, here's, here, you want to have a, let's, let's uh, speculate on the evolutionary, like, why would men need to donate blood? It's because we used to battle, dude. We used to bleed we used to a lot. We used to lose it naturally <laughs> all the time. Yeah, we're just weak now. I never bleed, you know what I mean? Yeah, Someone quit punch. holding on to your blood. Yeah. yeah. My own blood. Get rid of some blood. Let out some of my blood make it up. Anyway, mm. hey, when you guys are out in the in the public, you guys get excited when you see people using our sponsors? You guys are like, oh, there's, I see what's oh, of what course, Of course. Yeah. Viore is everywhere. Uh, everywhere yeah. now. Yeah, I no. see it at least once a day. So many leggings out there now. It's I, great. Dude, if I, whenever we go out, we go to Santana Row, we go to Valley Fair, whatever, go to the mall, and we're walking, and I see just I see it all over the place you now. Know, you know, it's mm -hmm. funny. When we first, I mean, we've been partnering with them for, what, four years now yeah. or whatever? So when we first used to, uh, I used to see people like that, I, a lot of times would ask them, oh, you, are you familiar Same. With, my, with mind pump stuff? They're so big now that- <laughs> <You're> like, uh, <laughs> no. It's, yeah. <laughs> That I've like, already been, I've yeah. already been told it's like Nike. Yeah. Hey, you must. They're, they're like yeah, just yeah. wearing it for comfort. Yeah. And, and going to work. You know, yeah. There's nothing like fitness. Related. Hey, early on, I really felt like a, there was a good chance that if you met someone or saw someone wearing Viore, but I mean, they're so big now and they're everywhere, and so many people are wearing it. That doesn't happen anymore. Yeah, I, so I, I, I feel I, like an idiot. When I, I do that. think I predict that they're going to be the uh, like one of the biggest players in that space. Well, I mean, we that when we brought up the we're when they there. were valued at what was it two or four billion. Yeah. Two or four billion, like that was like a year ago. 
And they, I know, I know they've been on a great run since then. And I don't know, I don't follow Lulu to see. I imagine that space is because I mean, Lulu for us a long time dominated that space, and now you have companies like Gym Shark, Alpha Elite. You've got Viore. Yeah, you've got Athleta. Yeah, like, you, you have a lot of competitors on. now in that space. So I imagine that it's it's. I'm sure they're taking up a lot of the market share. For men's stuff, Viore's the best. I, 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 I yeah, have yet are. to do anything from Lulu that I like. Yeah, but ever. I mean, it's they've made a lot of progress on the women's side. Like, yes. my, Courtney just raves about it now. I'm like, uh, the, the difference is substantial for her between, you know, Lulu and those other brands, Athleta and stuff like that. So. Could, Katrina does too. For There was a hot minute there where I would come home pretty much every week and I'd bring her like a Lulu outfit. You know, this was obviously well before Mind Pump and stuff. And uh, she used to have like a whole dresser that was nothing but Lulu shit, and she don't wear none of that no more. She yeah. wears all. Oh. Yeah, she's been converted. Fooled. Yeah, and it's not because she's like just because of mind pump. She like truly likes it. Like I wouldn't give a shit if she wears. Well, that's Courtney. She doesn't. She has no filter. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. She'll, She'll tell you. I don't think any of the wives are like that. No, oh, dude. none of them are doing anybody brutally a favor. so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. yeah, I appreciate that. Though. I know, but it's I, good though. Actually, you know? I wanted to ask you, Justin. This is a story that you were supposed to bring up a while ago. It was in our notes. We had never okay. brought it up. I'm very curious is it about the frozen dick. I'm very curious about this. Oh, I knew you were going to ask. So, what's me up about with this. the? Was it was it a cross country skier? It was yeah, Olympics. It was in the Olympics. I thought. Yeah. So, the, <laughs> so what happened? Is this real? Yes, yeah, so it was so cold. I mean, it, it literally. I think it was. I, I we'd have to look and see like what the temperature was. It was like it had to be below freezing, obviously. And this poor guy, uh, like his his junk literally froze. So, and, in order for that to happen. I would think that you kind of peed yourself, or you're so sweaty in that area, then the then then the, and it's cold, and so then it freezes. Yeah, the, I don't know physiologically how like specifically there. You know, I mean, <laughs> well, you know, that's the, like you're you're moving your limbs. That's the only way I could think it happens, right? You get all this moisture and it water. Must be moisture. Yeah, related. you either you either pees his pants, it's and so like he's ice. Not, yeah, and then it turns into ice, right? Because it doesn't make sense that is just his 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 junk freezes. He, he, no. he was he no, was because that's usually the warmest place. Right? He was yeah. in the lead, and he's like, I'm way ahead of everybody, and they saw snow. <laughs> He saw a snowman. He's like, hold on a second. <laughs> I got time. Bro, imagine how painful that, that would be. So is he losing? He, sh- he didn't shake well enough, probably. Did they, oh, did they, you know, did he, does he lose it? Do they cut it off? Like, what's the deal? Or are they able to bring it back to life? I think they brought it back to life. How? With uh, CPR? Heat, pack, Friction. heat packs. Yeah. Is that what it says? Uh, yeah. I'm trying to yeah, find heat, the details. So if it's frozen right. and you get an erection, what happens? Wow. Does it break? Uh, you probably you, you make snowmen. Uh, yeah, probably you're probably not sexually aroused at all when your dick is frozen. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Probably it's, it's that's like asking if someone you know put your dick in a vice and then hey, what do you I think uh, happens yeah, to get a hard on? You know who you're talking to right now? Yeah. <laughs> just, that's just, uh, the Saturday night. No, that's that's wild. So they brought it back then, huh? They just put heat packs on it. Yeah, because like, I thought if something froze, that was it. Frostbite. I've heard of of dick related injuries before. This is a first for me. Frozen? Yeah, because yeah. I've heard like you can actually break. Like, and there's been yeah. examples of if you actually breaking your dick. Like, What are you uh, finding out over there, Doug? So Tell with the wind chill factor, it was like minus 26 degrees. Oh, wow. See, minus 26. That's insane. Uh-huh. But still, would need, I felt that before would need some moisture or drippage or something. Going yeah, on. I don't think it was fully frozen, okay? It was a little bit frozen, according to him. Uh, oh, so like so maybe yeah, like frostbite. Cool. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Just yeah. a head. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Just was you, man, you managed to bring dicks in twice in did this I? conversation. Did I well, I did the first one. You did. I was like, I thought that yeah. I was pushing the limits with Doug already. I was like, you know, Doug, it's been a while since we said dick on the show. Yeah. I think I'm going to bring it in. It's all your guys' fault, Yeah, I'm bring just... it in. And then Sal was like, wait a yeah. second, before we wrap this up, I want to talk about <laughs> dicks some more. Hey. I, keep, I keep that in my pocket <laughs> if there's been too many references. You know, I'm like, oh, it's been too much. Yeah, my bad. This, Sorry, this episode yes. will need a warning in the in the intro. Yeah. Hey, you got to check out one of the sponsors we've been with the longest, Organifi. These are performance-enhancing health supplements, many of them vegan-based, all organic. One of my favorites is their vegan protein. Combines multiple sources of vegan proteins to give you a good amino acid profile for maximum muscle development, recovery, and fitness. But they have other products, too. They have something called Pure, which is great for cognitive function. They have a green juice, which is good for overall health, a red juice, which is great for energy, and a gold juice, which is great for relaxation. Go check this company out. Head over to mindpumppartners.com, click on Organifi, and use the code MINDPUMP for 20% off. All right, here comes the rest of the show. All right, our first caller is Carly from Idaho. Carly, what's happening? How can we help you? Um, so, hi guys, this is so exciting. Um, <laughs> I just got done with MAPS Powerlift, and I feel like 
first of all, it was awesome. I was able to add like 10 to 15 pounds to my previous one rep maxes. Um, I feel really good and I feel like my metabolism is in a magical place right now. I have been like absolutely ravenous and feeding the hunger and I'm like staying super lean, not, you know, like I feel like I look great. I feel great. Um, and so going out of power lift, I decided to start maps strong. Um, cause I'm thinking about, there's a, like a local strongman competition that I'm thinking about doing in the fall. Oh, right. So I thought that would be, um, a good direction to go coming out of power lift. Um, but I just got done with the first week of strong and I am, have been a lot more sore than I typically am following your other programs. I've done several in the past. Um, and I'm just wondering if, cause I'm, I'm going from phase three of power lift where like, I'm never doing more than three reps in a set to phase one of strong, mm-hmm. which is 15 to 20 reps. Yeah, yeah. And I'm wondering if the soreness I'm experiencing is something that I should just push through initially um, or if I should reduce volume maybe by knocking a set off of each exercise for maybe the first couple weeks and then scale up um, to the way it's programmed. I basically am trying to figure out how to preserve the awesome place my metabolism is in. Yeah. Okay. So how far in too strong are you? I am. Today will be the first day of week two. Oh, okay. This is totally normal. So when you move from really low reps to high reps, soreness is very common. It's, it's like it's like being yeah. your first day in the gym. That it was is. a dramatic shift. It's, and too. it's not like that the other way around. You go from really high reps to low reps, and it feels different. You might feel in your joints a little bit, but you don't get really sore. Soreness from the high reps after low reps is actually quite common. You're only in week two. Uh, everything, you said your metabolism is good. You're strong. I, I say you're probably okay. Now, if you feel like you're overtrained, so besides the soreness, if you're like having trouble sleeping, If you're noticing other aches and pains, if you're noticing an intolerance to heat or cold, libido crash, like really weird fatigue, in that case, I would say let's reduce some of the volume. The other thing you could do is just reduce the intensity a little bit. So I'm assuming the work sessions are where you're feeling most of this. Is that correct? Um, Yeah, I feel like it's primarily, like for sure, the the work session with the um, sled drives in it was where I was like, ooh, maybe this is too much because I like kind of almost made myself throw up but I oh, might, well, it might also be yeah. partially because I think going from the heavy low yes. reps to 15 to 20 rep range I maybe I'm overestimating the amount of weight that I should be mm-hmm. um that's a good using for those types of movements that's- it's mostly like the head drives the snatch grip deadlifts oh, like yeah. the major movements that I'm feeling like maybe are a little bit too much. Yeah, that's totally normal. And so when you go from powerlifting, well, powerlifting is very, you know, bench, deadlift, squat. Strong is much more unconventional, much more dynamic. Phase one of strong is very different from phase three of powerlift. So in this, a, a lot of people make this mistake. They go from low reps, heavy, mm-hmm. and they go, they look at high reps and they guesstimate how much weight they should use. And it's usually more than they need that they should. Yeah, and besides the reps, I mean, you're doing these unconventional type movements yep. that like provided a completely new stimulus for your body. So, I mean, you made a pretty dramatic shift from where you were before. So, yeah, if you give it a bit of time, I think your body will acclimate a bit more. But I mean, it's it's smart that you're already considering these yes. in terms of how to kind of tone things down just a bit, so you're not so hammered. Go go lighter. I'd say go lighter. That's I, it, though. I really think yeah. I think what I think you're in a great place right now. I think uh, the fact that you ran uh, power lift first, saw the results you did, feeling your metabolism the way you feel, getting to I mean to be that highly conditioned, that consistent with your training, and then being able to switch to a new program and almost feel like it's you're a beginner again with the soreness and stuff like that. It's like such a good place to be. And all things considering with the metabolism going good, feeling good about your body, you're in a great place. You probably just stacked on a little more weight for 15 to 20 reps than you probably should have. And I think simply totally. adjusting that a little bit 
you're you're probably going to be just fine and you're doing really good. Totally. I mean, to give you an example, like if I did, I'll, I'll just use some arbitrary number. I'll use like numbers that I would use, right? So let's say I'm going really heavy, low reps with squats. Let's say I'm doing uh, sets of three with, uh, let's say 400 pounds, right? So I'm doing sets of three with 400 pounds. And then I'm like, I'm going to switch to 15 reps, okay? I'm going to go down to like 200, like literally half of the weight. And, and not because the weight is too heavy per se, but I start doing sets of 15 reps after my body's acclimated to doing sets of three. By the time I get, and you, I'm sure you experienced this, by the time you get to the second or third set, oh my God, it is like, I am dying. I feel Grueling. like I'm going to throw up. Yeah. It was like cardio. Yeah. And so you, you got to go lighter than you think and then slowly ramp it up as the weeks go on. But you only completed one week. So now you're in week two. By the, by the end of the second week, your body will start to feel a lot better. And the third week should start to feel really good. Yeah. And just as you start to feel really good, we transition you to a new phase. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it, it sounds like Evil. you went a little it sounds like you went a little too heavy, especially like snatch grip, deadlifts, and the high pulls. Go lighter than you think because they're okay. really challenging. They're really, really challenging on the body. Okay. Yeah. Okay, good to know. I just wanted to make sure I wasn't because I know you guys talk about like if it feel like do the least amount yeah. to yes. get the most amount of change. And I didn't want to overdo it and mess myself up with this magical place that I'm in right now. <laughs> no, yeah, I would go just a, go lighter. Yep. Yeah. Just go lighter and enjoy the different feel. It's obviously a different feel, right? When you're powerlifting, it's a different feel than when you're doing these these higher reps. And that's look at that's strongman training, right? When we wrote the program, I mean, when you look at it, you know, I mean, you're looking into strongman competitions. You definitely need to be strong, but you need to have strength stamina too. It's and not you have just to move heavyweight. Well, yeah, it's different. It's, it's totally different. Well, and you know, speaking of phase one of strong, one of the things I would I would do too is whatever, like I would reduce the weight significantly. Whatever number I think I'm going to do, I would go even lower than that. And then while I'm going through the 15 to 20 reps, if it it just seems too light when I get to reps 12, 13, I'd yeah. slow the reps down slow the reps down or get a little pause in there and yes. like, and, and challenge myself that way. So throw a little bit of isometrics in there within the reps to, you know, fatigue the muscle a little bit more without you having to load the bar more. Um, that's what I would recommend. So I'd recommend going significantly lighter and then just kind of focus more on the technique uh, of the exercise. You're going to get really good shoulder, back, and butt development. That program is excellent for the posterior chain of the shoulders. So if those are areas you want to focus on, you're going to enjoy the program. Absolutely. I'm so excited. Thank you guys so much. Yeah. Thanks for calling in. Thanks All for right. that. Yeah. And that just so happens to be, uh, it, 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 we're, we're, this is during, we're doing that promotion, right? With both programs, Doug. Yes. So this just so happens to be our, our promo for the month is map strong plus maps power lift. It's such power a great bundle. combo. To oh, it's, it's incredible. Mm -hmm. They're complimentary. Yeah. You know, but because one's called strong and one's called power lift, people think that they're very similar. They're not, but they're extremely complimentary. And strong, you know, powerlift was popular right out the gates because people like powerlift, they're familiar with the bench press, the deadlift, and the squat. Strong was one of those programs that we really had to sell hard on the podcast because a lot of people are like, well, it's strongman training. I don't know if I want it became a favorite. People do it and they they love the way it affects their body. It's a lot of fun. It's actually one of my it's my favorite non-traditional resistance training program that we have. Uh, but yeah, it's you go from low reps to high reps. It's yeah. it's way different, dude. You got to go way lighter than you think and feel oh. it out. And by the, by this, it takes like two to three weeks before you can really push the weight with those reps. Strong really comes out of the gates too, uh, <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. like crazy. So I mean, that doesn't surprise me that she'd have that kind of response like the first week. Well, yeah. I would say that w w strong is probably our most unconventional program of all programs. It has the most unconventional exercises in it. Pretty close. I mean, I would, OCR is real unconventional too, yeah, but yeah, pretty close. I would, I would say it's up there. If it's not the, it's one yeah, of the most. Yeah. And then powerlift for sure is the most basic. Very conventional. You're literally doing, yeah, the most basic, you know, four or five movements yeah. in the whole program. So talk, it's such a great you know, contrast to it. So it's such a good program to run back and back to back. Really proud of our marketing team for actually putting that together. We didn't even tell them to do that. I thought yeah, that was great. <laughs> Finally. Our next caller is Callan from Oregon. Callan, what's happening? How can we help you? Hey, how's it going, guys? Good, um, first right. of all, obviously, just want to say thank you so much for everything you've done for everyone in this industry um, and me. Um, I used to drive to San Francisco from Coos Bay, which is an eight-hour drive, uh, almost three times a week. Wow. So 16 hours, uh, quite a bit. So you guys cool. saved my life for a lot of that. So oh, cool. I appreciate it. Awesome. Sorry about Adam. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're all sorry. 
Fuck off. Um, <laughs> so my question is, is I work on a tugboat. So I do 14 days or 17 days at home and then 14 to 17 days on the boat. Um, I have uh, anabolic. I have performance. I have aesthetic. And I have map split and maps anywhere. So I bought a lot of you guys programs. However, they're three month programs and usually in adaptation phases, hence maps. Um, so how can I follow a program like anabolic, for example, and get through maybe four or five foundational workouts and then get on a boat that I have extremely limited space hmm. and not a lot of access to equipment to, um, and still follow it. Does that three month program become a six month program or can I use maps anywhere As a kind of yep. instead of that? Yeah, dude, you yeah, hit the nail on the head. That's the one. I would go, let's say you're in phase one of maps anabolic and you do like two weeks of phase one, then you're off on the, on the boat. I would do maps anywhere while I'm on the boat. Then when you come back, you would jump back into maps anabolic, either right where you left off or maybe halfway, like maybe the, the week that you ended, maybe start halfway through that week mm -hmm. and go back into it. And you're just going to use okay. maps anywhere as a bridge yeah. every time you're on the boat. Do and you, that should be great. Do you have anywhere where you could set up a, a TRX? That's or exactly like a what suspension I was thinking. I, I don't. I, I uh, thought about doing that. Damn. There's a small spot on the boat, but then I have to drill into it to uh, <laughs> to put something like that. And then yeah. we'd have to get a new uh, certification so we can do that. Good. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That, that, that cancels out my uh, input. Yeah, no, that's yeah. it, man. You bridge with maps anywhere. I mean, that's one of the main <clears throat> reasons why we designed that program. Obviously, we designed it for people without equipment, but then we also designed it mm. for people who travel <clears throat> because we train. You know, we train a lot of executives in the in the Bay Area as trainers, and I would do this for clients all the time. You know, I had clients that worked for you know big tech companies like Apple, and they travel and they'd be gone for you know every month they'd be gone for a week or two. And so what I would do is I would give them workouts to do in their hotel room, and then they'd come back, and we would just jump right in to where we left off. It is different, but it's actually pretty cool. In fact, I if someone's watching this right now and they don't travel, experiment with this. It's a lot of fun. It changes things up, and some people do better uh, mm -hmm. bridging their program with a bodyweight program. I would actually say a lot more. Here, I after I saw that study, we brought. I don't know if Colin, if you watched or listened to the episode where we talked about this study. Um, I believe I saw it first when Lane posted about it. I think Sal had read it somewhere else before. Um, but they did a study on a, a, a group of people that were training, right, or two groups of people that were training. One group was training every single day, basically consistently for, I think, six months, I think is what it was. Yeah. And then the other group, uh, every third week, they took a week off. So basically okay. every month, they were taking a whole week off of no training. And at the end of the six-month study, the the group, the, the both groups saw the same amount of progress. So you know, you're comparing someone who doesn't miss any training for six months versus a person who misses a whole week every single month actually progress just as far as the everyday group. Mm -hmm. So there's tremendous value in actually having either a complete week off or switching it to kind of like a little more recovery or like focusing on body weight training. Like you're still going to be stimulating the muscle. I actually think it'll be great uh, uh, complement to running like an anabolic program when you're back home. Mm -hmm. And if you're actually good and consistent with it, I bet you'd see great progress that way. Yeah. Totally. So one thought just crossed my mind. Like, so you have a door though. Right? <laughs> um, it's not the right kind of, it's a uh, waterproof water seal door. Oh, okay. Um, then they have to be water sealed at all times. Mm. So <laughs> if, if I put anything in there Kill to me, do dude. something like that, Kill it becomes, me. yeah. Okay. Justin's yeah, trying to sink a liability. Okay. So on like, I think two, two or three podcasts ago, you guys talked about if you knew a client was going to have an extended period away that you might just hammer them that week because you knew they were going to recover. Is that like, could I look at doing something like maps PED for the two weeks and then doing maybe a mobility focused, stuff while yeah, at work because yeah. i can do yoga and i can do things like that but. yeah but no okay the only way that i would let you do that if you were a client of mine is if we worked up to that much volume otherwise you're not okay. getting the real benefits yeah. of, right if we yeah, i just swapped from split to anabolic because i found myself you know i haven't worked out in a while i just had a, we have i have four kids just had another one just built a house oh congratulations so i'm coming you're off busy guy. yeah thanks just coming off of nine months and not working out. So I didn't want to introduce that much volume right yeah, away. So yeah. I swap back to I, I only do that if the person's not going to work out 
when they're gone and if they're already training at well, a very high volume. Yeah, exactly. That's the most the most important part is that is that if you if like let's say you, this was like a a vacation or a once this wasn't like part of your lifestyle where you kind of go on this boat all the time and you and I had been training together for a whole year and I had I had worked you through the like you know anabolic performance aesthetic split, and then you're about to take off. I'm like, all right, let's ramp you all the way up to PED. Let's get after the intensity, really get you for the last couple of weeks, and then we're gonna you know rest recover while you're gone. That's where I would do that. I would never take you from you know you know not training for nine months, barely getting back into <laughs> it, and then throw you at PED. Your body is gonna okay. be trying to recover the whole goddamn time. It's not gonna get any real progression from that. And that's just that's not gonna set you up for success. What you're doing is is the right thing. It's the smart move. It was smart for you to go back to anabolic. Mm -hmm. Follow that all the way up until boat time on the boat. Do your best to get maps anywhere in as consistently as you can, and then when you come back, resume where you were on the just program. Keep sending the signal, and, like. yeah. And I think, you okay. know, and and really, honestly, at this point, I like depending on what your goals are. Right, obviously, uh, you're not trying to do like a powerlifting meet or something crazy, but if you're just trying to stay healthy, fit, and strong, you're going to get that. You, just, you know, do your best to eat well and not like an asshole while you're while you're on the boat <laughs> and and stay. It's hard. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> And honestly, that is so. Be being real, that that's what will do the most damage or set you back the furthest is, you know, the combination of being very sedentary and then also eating like an asshole. Like, try and 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 stay as as physically active as you can by using anywhere, yeah. and and be honest with yourself when you don't. Um, those are the days you need to probably scale back on the eating and not allow yourself to go overboard. So, no pun intended. Yeah. Are you are you when you guys are on the on the boat? Are you at on sh at shore too or do you stay on the boat the whole time how's that uh, work so we we just work out of the columbia river in portland and i think you've been in portland before so um there is a couple times where it's shore but it's so short-lived and it's just like because i work from example midnight till six in the morning have six hours off and then i work noon till eight o'clock or six o'clock at night Damn. so my rest is broken up which is terrible and then you just spend if you have any extra time you just try to recover yeah, Damn, this, guy's, yeah. this guy's manly as hell. He works yeah. at a tugboat, yeah. got four kids, built a house. <laughs> hey, and honestly, like, uh, uh, <laughs> shit done. Not, now that I know that, um, if again, if you're a client of mine, uh, the, I'm giving you anywhere so you have those tools, but then I'm actually telling you, listen to your body as you're going through this because there's going to be probably some days where you're fucking yeah. burnt. I can only imagine you're probably pretty active anyway at work, right? Yeah, I walk around 27,000 steps a day at work. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, maps anywhere is so, perfect. <laughs> quite a bit. <laughs> Maps anywhere is perfect, okay. and then listen to your body, like Adam said. So, take time off if you need it. Okay, uh, two two real small questions. Well, one, I need I know you guys are sellers, so I'll get to that second. But first, when, I'm not sure if you can see me, but when is this Maps Claw shirt coming back? Because it's the best shirt you guys have ever had. Oh, oh. that's a good question. I don't know. Uh, Savannah uh, can, can only see. Uh, it. Is that the bird one on it? It's the bird. Yes, uh, okay. uh, oh, eagle it's with, the bird the with the barbell. You might want to save it's that. That's a, that's a collector's now. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Uh, gonna, I know it's amazing. We're gonna make an NFT um, out of it. It's gonna be worth millions. So hang on to it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and then second. So my wife, uh, she's seven months postpartum now, and I'm. She has a friend that does the the split body workouts, but she can only go with her like two or three times a month. And I'm trying, we have a full road garage gym and I'm trying to convince her to do maybe a map starter or a maps resistance. Yes. And I want to, I want you guys to sell her. Cause she's going to listen to this <laughs> on why full body is that much better. You're, especially. Okay. Listen, you are going to, you're going to get stronger, faster, recover faster, get leaner faster. If you do this the right way, if you do it the wrong way, you you might be able to tolerate more work, but that doesn't mean you're going to get there any faster. If anything, you'll, you're going to slow yourself down. And then postpartum, there's a lot of muscles you need to reconnect to, and you can cause some long term damage, especially in the pelvic floor and the low back. So, map starter would be ideal. And it doesn't mean because you're starting with map starter that you get to where you want any slower. If anything, you get there any faster because it's the more appropriate way to train. So trust me on this. I've trained many many women postpartum and if you do it the right way the progress is amazing if you overdo it it's like forget about it here's my pitch for you for map starter we're gonna give it to you for free if you don't take advantage, oh, if, you, if you don't take advantage of it i'm gonna charge your husband double for it so here's, here's, <laughs> here's my pitch yeah. i'm gonna bill his ass so we're, we're, gonna send it, we're gonna send it to you for free it's like the best program for you to follow after having a baby follow it stick to it trust the process yeah. we know what we're doing if you don't follow it you don't stick to it you don't use it i'm gonna bill your husband yeah hey congratulations <laughs> on the new go. baby yeah thank you 
Hey, Justin, keep the Star Wars real, man. Love right. you, buddy. Yeah, <laughs> use the force. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys. I'll awesome. see you later. Right. As if he couldn't get any cooler with Justin, right? <laughs> He's like, I built, I, I like I built a house. I work on a tugboat. Justin was like, wow. Yeah, this yeah. is a man. I like sit. Star Wars. I saw yeah. the semi happening over there. <laughs> 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 what? <Whoa. laughs> Super, <laughs> Superman crush going no, on over here. After happen. the show, so <laughs> yeah. like, what's his contact? It's, it's a high five, Adam. There's no semi. That's what you call it? Okay. High noon. High five. With no hands, yeah. It's just a high noon. <laughs> yeah, I, no. saw, I saw him peeking over there for his, his contact <laughs> yeah. info. No, I, I tell you what, dude. Hey, I tell you what, Damn man. It, you guys, I, I, you know, even if you don't travel, doing like a, a phase of a maps program, then doing like a couple weeks of anywhere, and then doing a phase of maps, and then a couple weeks of anywhere, that is a great approach. Long term, great results. I don't care if you travel or not, great results. Doing I mean, that. I would love to see. I, I mean, my prediction is that group would do the best, right? So if we if we took that study that they already proved where someone took a whole week off oh, yeah. versus somebody who trained consistently In all the way through. In a six-month period, I agree. And then if we had a third group where they the, instead of having a week completely off, they did body weight training or focused on mobility for a week and then came back, I bet you, 100%, I bet you that group beats everybody. Our next caller is Steven from Colorado. Hey, what's up, Steven? How can we help you? Hey, what's up, guys? Um... Sal, what's up, man? Fellow Siciliano Americano here. Oh, good for you. Good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, guys, thanks for the great show. Great content. Um, I want to support the channel now and and uh, pay for a program, but let me tell you where I'm at. Um, 38 years old, 190 pounds. Um, been training mostly aesthetic training for like the last 20 years, but um, got into mountain biking like like five years ago. But like think like downhill mountain biking, not like the wearing spandex and doing thirty mile rides. Like the cool, uh, like the cool mountain biking yeah. style. Is what you're <laughs> well, saying. Well, so there's like there's a lot of like static holds and quick bursts. Yeah. But um, there's a lot of fitness too, though. But based on your advice, I've been bulking and trying to like flip the met metabolism for the last two months. So like been doing PPL and uh, trigger sessions. Um, uh, but for like the full two years before that, I was like full body plyo circuit hit training and mountain biking. So like two shows ago, you completely described me overtraining too much cortisol. No. Couldn't cut a stubborn, like five to 10 pounds of fat. No. So mountain bike season is coming up. Um, I want to be fast as hell, but I want to keep my, my T up there. Um, and I, and I would like to be yoked too. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> should I go with like a maps performance for the start of the season in a couple of months or like just go like that traditional mountain bike training and kind of like return to like a bulking routine after a, a few months of that? How many, wow. how many days, how many days a week will you be training with the mountain bike when that season starts? <sighs> so I'm probably going to go like four days a week um, on like doing actual rides, but like they're kind of like like 45 minutes, like long, slow grinds. And then like three minutes down of like, like absolute full on burst. This is like totally my brother-in-law right yeah. here. So this is a, I'll tell you exactly what I'm dealing with with him. And by the way, too low, he had low testosterone issues, losing muscle. Um, that was a big problem for him. Um, and so what I have him on is uh, anabolic one time a week. So one time a week he runs maps in a ball and I really am I'm, I'm hard on him about making sure he's hitting his protein intake consistently because he also has a habit of drinking his calories. And so he'll have some days where he's low protein and then he's not weight training and he's stays lean, you know, but he loses all his muscle and his testosterone roll, uh, goes to the floor. And so anabolic one time, the only way I'd want you to do more than one time a week of anabolic would ba be completely based off of the, the volume of mountain biking you do. So let's say it's like an, kind of an off week and you only go for two, two days or, you know, three really moderate, easy days. And you're like, Oh, I could probably train twice to get two full body routines in that week. Then I'd allow you to do that. But I, I don't think I'd ever allow you to go three. I think especially someone like you who's already admitting that you are the cortisol junkie and you already lean towards doing too much. I think I'd probably be in your ear all the time saying, trust the process. Just just show me one day a week consistently. Hit your protein intake. Get, get enough. Be fed while you do your training and stuff. And then let, let's see what your body does. Um, that's that's my advice. Yeah. Now, now when does the season start? 
Um, so it's still snowy here in Denver, but I, I bet in about a month, like I'll, I'll be able to be riding like three or four days a week. Okay. Yeah. Leading, uh, up, leading up to the month, you could do, you know, maps performance as it's laid out, but once you get into season, do what Adam said. Okay. Great. Mm -hmm. Are you, uh, are you like big time into this too? Have you been doing it for a while? Just like, like really in the last six years, but like, you know, the last 14 years before then, like I was just, you know, training for aesthetics and, and not, didn't really have a sport for a while. So I race now. Um, and like racing is, is really competitive out here. So like that's racing doesn't start till like June or so like June, July, August is race season. Um, but even, even among like from March to like December, it's like, it's still very considered like competitive. I want to, I want to whip my boy's asses like every time I'm out. <laughs> you, dude, you, um, you sound just like my brother. Yeah. I just, you'll have to, you'll, you'll have to look him up on Instagram. He's T V R I S me. So T T V R is me all one word. His name's Tom, and uh, he uh, he's hardcore into it. Always, he's got some buddies that are actually Red Bull athletes, sponsored athletes, and but yeah, he's like the he's normal tech guy and has a, another life. But he gets really passionate about the stuff. They all link up and travel and do this shit. So. Yeah, yeah. No, Steve, go go maps performance leading up to the season, and then one maps anabolic workout a week while you're doing the you're in the season. That's great. All right. Now, do you have in either one of those programs? No. Like my, my big question is like which one you know, do I do like, I want to support you guys. I'm, I'm buying one of these programs cause I love the show and I've just kind of been, been picking things here and there for like a year. Or so, yeah. well, I think you should do both, but we'll send you maps performance. Okay. So if you want to get maps in a ball, you can, but we'll send you maps performance. In fact, I'll have Doug email you a, a code, a discount code for maps anabolic as well. Rad. Thanks right. so much guys. Yeah. Thank you, man. All right. Keep it up. I mean, te Jesus. technically, I could have given them both, but he said he would buy one. So. Well, you need you need diapers. <laughs> you don't want to stop them. Yeah, you need diapers too. Right now. You, you need diapers right now. I need oh, diapers right. too. So. You, oh, I see. For the baby, <laughs> it's, yeah, it's not yeah. for me. It's for my kid, dude. <laughs> you try you try to take food out of my kid's mouth. Uh, <laughs> He's literally. This is like spot on. My brother in law, who is yeah. fucking stubborn you, as hell, and you know so what, Doug? Give them both. Funny. It's such a <laughs> give, them, give them both, Doug. I feel like yeah. it's yeah. such a growing popular sport too. I didn't realize how huge it was. even in San Cruz my backyard is like you have, one of, the you have one of the best places yeah. that's what my, i heard right my brother-in-law travels over here to go ride where you're at so he rides over there where i'm at also back over there there's i mean there's places everywhere but those are some of the best places i didn't know how intense it was until i started watching these uh like they, they would have these gopros on them bro tom oh, broke yeah. his fucking hip last year <laughs> yeah dude he broke his hip last <laughs> year then, crazy then this courses. asshole was on crutches yeah. and and then as soon as he he wasn't even cleared yet, as soon as he could actually get up on the bike, he had crutches still. He'd get out. Imagine seeing a guy by himself pull up to a hill and, and get out in crutches, hobble over to his bike, and then get on his <laughs> bike and then go fucking pedal up a hill and then go down like ball I set. Tom. Now, did Tom, did Tom go to, to our, our place over at MP Hormones? Uh, yes, he is. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So he, they're, they're actually working with him right now. So, and that was eventually what we had to do because he, you know he was so stubborn about. He's more into biking. This guy obviously is. Uh, Steven's more into keeping more of a muscular physique. Where yeah. I had to convince Tom yeah, to do yeah, that. Yeah. Tom was so much into the biking. He didn't care. Right? But he was realizing he was recognizing what was happening to his body, and he was in his level. His testosterone levels were so low that he came to me for that, and I said, "Listen, just do anabolic, and then also." You know, uh, keep your protein intake because he was really low on his protein. Drinking beer is like his is was his thing, and uh, so I and I and I helped it a little bit, but it wasn't enough. So eventually, he did go over and and see them. I mean, Tom's in his mid forties too, so yeah. he's definitely a good candidate for it. Our next caller is Damien from Ohio. Damien, what's happening? How can we help you? Hey, man, uh, just getting done with the gym. Actually, I'm really excited that you guys uh, that took this question. Um, basically what's going on is I'm a professional wrestler and, um, I just feel like I do, I do a lot of bodybuilding stuff. To, uh, I would assume that somebody would program it as a bodybuilding routine. Um, but basically what I'm looking for is just to like get some more athletic workouts in. Um, I really want to get better with the Olympic lifts, like the snatch, the clean and jerk, mm -hmm. but just the way that I do my stuff. Um, I really like to start with the heavy lifts first, squat, bench press, all those, just the programming with how many accessory movements there are with the Olympic lifts. I'm trying to figure out how I can incorporate those, still do my big lifts and still go, uh, get some aesthetic work in because I need to be aesthetic as well. Yeah. So oh. hold on. So you're a pro wrestler, you, like a WWE. Yeah. A lot of, a lot of like, things. So you make money doing this? 
I, I, I do make money. I'm not in the WWE, but uh, it's definitely a goal one day. Dude, that's rad. Do you have a name? Is, is, do you just yeah, go by your, your normal what's your name? Or do you have a name? Move? Da- Damien Chambers. Oh, so it's the same. Oh, that's right, yeah. dude. Good deal. Okay, so Olympic lifts are interesting, right? Because uh, they're very fast, they're explosive and technical. I don't think it's a good idea to do them at the end of a workout uh, when you're fatigued. You're probably better off doing them at the beginning. It of It should workout. be the core of your workout, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, I, I like I can do Olympic lifts and then go into like squats and stuff like that. But doing squats and then going into Olympic lifts might be a little mm. more challenging. Nonetheless, um, I would defer to uh, our friend uh, Sonny Webster. If you go on his uh, Instagram and look up stuff that he has, he's an Olympian. He was an uh, he was an Olympian, and he's uh, obviously knows what he's talking about when it comes to those kinds of workouts. Nonetheless, you're better off not mixing stuff in one workout, but rather dedicating a day to each one of those attributes. In in my uh, personal opinion, well, so I that- think you should have like an Olympic day your strength day, and then some aesthetic stuff. I don't think doing it on the same day would be a good idea. Oh, I don't think it'll hurt to do aesthetic after you do your Olympic lifts. I think that I would... I mean, that's true. You could do aesthetics after. Yeah, Olympic, yeah. so I think I think you're fine. And and by the way, most Olympic lifts, you're going to... So when you're talking about your core lifts, I'm assuming you're thinking squat, bench, deadlift, the big ones, right? Um, yeah. That, you're, you're, in Olympic lifts, you're going to get a lot of that, right? So you're, you're that would replace, like, I mean, if you're you're doing like a, a snatch or overhead press i mean it's it's like a squat or like an overhead press right so you're you're getting you're getting those movements in there they would be the the foundation of my my programming and then after i you know did those movements in the workout i would then move over into the auxiliary stuff so the you know tricep push downs and bicep curls and lateral raises and some of your like sculpting type stuff so uh, yeah. and I think Sal's advice is great. I think that uh, Sonny Webster, we've we've been this has been on the agenda for a long time for us to actually write yeah. an Olympic lifting. I know it's just a bummer we don't have that to defer you to, but yeah, he has great content. We've actually been trying to align with him with that. Yeah, so I would I would actually get one of his programs and then I would modify it a little bit because you also are you know because you're on stage or on camera and video and stuff like that, so you care about how you look. Uh, not just how you perform. So I would use his programming as like your base. And then I would, you know, maybe cut out a few things or bring, you know, scale back a little bit on probably the volume he's programming and then add in all the kind of auxiliary stuff. I mean, stuff. Uh, to be honest too, though, even in MAPS performance, we have like high pulls. And so you could replace that with like cleans yeah. and snatch and, you know, jerk. And you can, you could throw in some Olympic lifts, uh, the way that we programmed, you know, high pulls within the structure of the foundational uh, workouts. And so it, it kind of does accomplish a lot of what you're describing in terms of trying to maintain aesthetics but also keep that high level functional strength and in and, and mobility and movement um so if, if in terms of like a broad stroke kind of training guide like i think that's going to accomplish your needs the best from what we have uh but uh, like for what the, they're not saying anything that i disagree with uh i would definitely split it up so if you if you wanted to really focus in on olympic lifts i would replace those big uh, compound lifts with those that day, uh, specifically, and then do, uh, you know, your compound lifts another day and kind of split it up throughout the week. The challenge I'm having right now with like kind of wrapping my brain with giving you something more specific is I, I if I'm hearing you correctly, I feel like you really care about how you look because you're an on stage type of athlete, right? So you, you got to look cool, right? You look the part while you're out there, but then personally, right. you, you also would like to, you know, get pretty good at some of these Olympic lifts. The only problem that with that and trying to complement a program for that is Olympic lifting is such a high skill uh, that you need to be focused on at the beginning of your workout and it should be the primary focus it's not it's a, it's such a, this is actually one of the bones we have to pick with CrossFit is mm-hmm. they you know they kind of just throw it in there in these circuits and these crazy routines and it, it is such a high skill thing well, that it deserves the attention to be just focused on by itself let me ask you this like what's your motivation with them because like you're going to accomplish a lot of that you know yeah. even with triple extension and all that from just box jumps and also like kettlebell swings you're going to get a lot of like you know, hinging power yeah, from that as is well. Is it the power that you want or is it specifically you want to get good at those Olympic lifts? Yeah, it's de- it's definitely the power aspect. Mm-hmm. I, f- I feel like being more explosive can definitely help out oh, in the okay. ring. Oh, okay. Well, um, well, that changes things. I, I wouldn't, yeah. I, yeah, you, I would you don't need to go Olympic lifts. Yeah, you don't need to go super complex Olympic lifts to get that. You can do that with good plyo training. MAPS performance has and, got Yeah, it. MAPS performance, dude. Do you have MAPS performance? I don't. Dude, we'll send yeah, that to you. Yeah, one of the phases is power, and we put in there power movements to to improve explosive power, 
but we took out or we didn't put in Olympic lifts specifically because Olympic lifts are so complex that and by the time risk. yeah by the time you get good at them it takes a while to get good at them before you start to derive the power benefits right you got to really get good at the technique they're very complex instead we put things like high poles and movements with uh, kettlebells jump, and kettlebell box jumps yeah, yeah you're going to get explosive stuff just from that without having to wait for that that learning curve of the you know of the super complex olympic lifts so we'll send that to you damian Oh, that would be great. And, Thank and you so much. by the way, that doesn't mean you can't also, because I do know that Sonny has some cool stuff because part of like, like a, a really good Olympic coach, he won't even let you touch a bar for like probably the first few weeks to a yeah, month. It's, it's like a broomstick. You have like a broomstick. So there's nothing that says you can't follow a mass performance. So you get the power, you get all the things you're looking for. You're also going to get aesthetics training that program, which is really perfect for you. But then in the back of your mind, you're like, I also want to get good at doing some of these things. There's nothing wrong with you doing a lot of the, you know, broomstick work where you're just working on technique on some of your off days or, you know, at the end of a session where it's going to be so easy because you're doing a broomstick yeah. that all it is is about form and technique. Uh, you, you can also do that. Just I, I would just stick to the performance, though, as far as the programming for your needs and what you want. And then along the way, you can also be kind of practicing those movements. Totally. Hey, are you a good guy or are you a heel? <laughs> uh I mean, I, I'm I'm a good guy. Obviously, it's just whether or not you think I'm a good guy too. I always think I'm a good guy. <laughs> ah, you're, you're a heel. You're playing the role. <laughs> That's awesome, man. Good luck, Damien. Yep. Thank you guys so much. I really appreciate it. Appreciate it, brother. We actually, you know, that we actually have a lot of wrestlers. Uh, pro wrestlers I've seen since a few. the beginning. We have we yeah. had a couple. We've had a couple pro wrestlers at the very beginning that found. Bro, us. do you know how athletic you have to be to do that shit? Oh yeah. It's in, you know when I was a kid, I remember you when I watched all it, of the things. I was a huge fan, right? And as a kid, then you learn it's fake. You're like, oh man, it's fake. But then you realize like it's scripted. But that the shit's pain real. Fake, yeah, dude. dude. Well, I'm glad. You're still it, jumping and doing crazy shit. I don't know which one of you asked it, but that was such an important question to ask him. That, that was Justin. It was, that was a great question. Is like, you know, why do you want to do Olympic lifts? Is it for the power? And then as soon as you said that, I was like, oh shit. Well, I mean, when we created performance, that we wanted to try and give people the benefits of Olympic lifts without the complexity yeah, of it. Exactly. And so that was the idea of some of the programming in performance. Is we recognize that there's tremendous benefits from Olympic lifting, but we also also recognize it's incredibly high skilled and technical and takes a long time to get good at them so we wrote in exercises that will give you some of those those same things that you would get from olympic well, lifting I actually in more omitted, traditional movements. um uh you know some of those olympic lifts and power cleans and things from you know the high school kids i'm working with because you know i really want to accomplish uh, gaining that kind of power and strength and explosive uh, type of movement uh, without all of uh, the degree of uh, risk involved. Because, you know, once you start kind of throwing a barbell around, it takes so much skill to be able to uh, master all those things at once to where if we can limit it down to less variables involved, but still have those same, uh, you, you know, like uh, effects in terms of like what we're pursuing from them, uh, why not reduce it down to the meat of it? Dude, it's very complex. I remember when I first tried learning hang cleans, which is like not even an Olympic lift. It's like a, it's like a two steps below Olympic lift, but still more complex than your traditional bodybuilding stuff. I remember trying to do it and it felt like a reverse curl and I couldn't figure it out. And I had a trainer who was very proficient in Olympic lifts and he's like, here, broomstick, practice with this. And it like took me so long to move up to the bar mm -hmm. before I really got the feel or some of the feel. And I was never really good at it because I didn't practice it for longer than a couple months. But that's the thing. It's like the power you get, but you have to first get the, the, the skill uh, and the technique, which takes a long time. So if you just want the power, you can cut out that exercise and do other movements that are easier. They give you the power. They don't rely so much on that crazy uh, technical ability. Look, do you like our information? Well, then head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out our guides. We have guides that can help you with almost any fitness or health goal. You can also find all of us on social media. So Justin is on Instagram at mindpumpjustin. Adam is on Instagram at mindpumpadam. And I'm on Twitter at mindpumpsal.